here. Yeah, we gotta get out of here. I've gotta get to the airport and pick up my niece. You have a niece? You're not waiting for Sandy Porter, are you? What happened to Uncle Ike? Does my calling you Ike threaten you? But my uncle was not cut out to bust hookers and junkies. He's great with hookers and junkies. Ah! The murderer got away with $50,000 in jewelry. I took a bracelet, but I didn't kill nobody. Stop! Hurry! Ah! Suspect now has a hostage. This thing doesn't have a door. It's going to have seatbelts. You said that about the digital pulse watch. You're masculine. I think it looks great. You know, you can wear jewelry. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you know, if I weren't on duty, I'd love to pursue these insights that you have about my character. <laughs> <laughs> so would I. Yeah? Yeah. Call me. Sure. Great. Great. <laughs> Slow day, not even a pickpocket. How about you? I, uh, I'm having a great time. I'm enjoying this detail a lot. Yeah? Yeah. Well, how would you like a four-day suspension for turning an on-duty contact into an off-duty Zuggy Zuggy? The book is very clear about that. The book doesn't know from Zuggy Zuggy. Would you just put the book down? You've been out here long enough to know when to use the book and when not to use the book. You do not use it with Zuggy Zuggy. I'm sorry. This just never came up on the 15th floor until the Christmas party of 79. That must have been a real blast. Uh, listen, let's check out with the uniforms and get out of here. Yeah, we've got to get out of here. I've got to get to the airport and pick up my niece. Do you have a niece? Yeah, Sandy. I'm kind of her favorite uncle. My brother's in plumbing and hardware back in Iowa, and when he came out here and hit all the trade shows, she stayed with me. Naturally, I spoiled her rotten. Uh -huh. She's quite a little girl. I brought her to the Museum of Natural History, and by the time we came out of there, she had committed every dinosaur to memory in the Mesozoic era. What's the matter? A grease ball and a leather jacket about three stalls down. Mm -hmm. Looks a little too hinky to be buying designer jeans. Looks hinky. Did you hit what?
have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right, you, you read it. You can't do that! So? What are you doing? Uh, Don't you ever read the book? Uh, All right. Uh, you have the right to remain silent if you give up the right. Do you think we can get this guy through the system before 6 o'clock? He'll be out of prints in a half an hour. Paperwork should take 10 minutes max. You've got plenty of time to get to the airport. Good, let's get to Board. it. Jones. Soccer time to pause the depresses. That trash you hauled in has five priors on his rap sheet. Get a CII number on him, run him through NCIC on the computer, and see if he connects to any other open cases. We'll get right on it, sir. Yeah, well, grab a cup of coffee. The computer's been down all day. They should have it up in another hour. Oh, and by the way, nice work. Did my ears deceive me, or did he just say, nice, nice work. work? I'm still never going to get to the airport. Take off. I can handle it. How can I do that? Don't you have the, that girl with the hand puppets coming tonight? So she can start alone. Are you sure? I'm going to go get a cup of coffee. When I get back, be gone. Thank you. Hi, Porter. Can I help you? Willard Haskell, Universal Indemnity of Kenosha. You received our Form 318 about a mandatory policy review for your age group. It's just routine. Can I have your full name? I'm in a real hurry now. Do you think we could do this some other time? Fine. I'll uh, send you another 318 when I have a chance. But uh, Universal won't be able to cover you until then. All right, all right. Dwight Avery Porter. Anything else? Yeah, are you still employed by the Metropolitan Police? Isn't that obvious? In my business, nothing's obvious, Chief. I'm no longer a chief. See? I thought you were out of here. Insurance, just take a second. You don't by any chance carry a firearm, do you? He's a detective. What do you think he carries, a rubber dagger? Are firearms a problem? I'll never get out of here. What's your flight number? It's all here. Say thank you. Thank you. Ow. Listen, Mr. Haskell, I'm all yours. Well, shall we start with childhood diseases? The white zone is for the loading and unloading of passenger zone. Hey, whoa, whoa, pal. Hey, wait, no, no, no. I'm a, I'm a police officer myself. Congratulations. Hi, honey. Are you Sandy? Sandy Porter, are you? Me? Yes, fine. Hey, is she all right? Where's Ike? Is he all right? Yeah, he's fine. Well, who, who are, are you? you? Hi. Hey. I'm Sandy. Hi, I'm Tony Jonas. You're Ike's partner? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let me help you with your bags. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll take that one, too. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, so uh, you know about me, huh? Yeah, I talk about you all the time. Oh. You know, you really filled a big void in his life. Oh. Yeah. Dr. Gunter Lansman, do you know him? He's, he's my mentor. I've read almost everything he's ever written. Anyway, Dr. Lansman calls it a Daedalus fixation, but I think it's more of a sublimation of the real problem. Uh -huh. The real problem? Yeah, I can't deal with his divorce. Let me guess. Psych major. So what are you out here for? I just had to check out the schools in California. I suppose it's totally compulsive, you know, but I'm a sophomore, and, and where I'm going to school, we're still fooling around with penis envy. Unbelievable. Isn't it? Anyway, I figured that California is the home of Max Rubles and Von Gilman. I mean, Lonsman's Inside Clinic is just an hour up the coast. So how long are you in town for? Uh, I don't know. Long enough to check out the schools and get Ike back on his feet. Back on his feet? Ike's a miserable man, Tony. <laughs> you look wonderful. Doesn't my little girl look absolutely wonderful? Unbelievable. You know, I didn't tell you this. I was going to tell you in the car, but I was out there waiting for like a six-year-old. And then you come out of those sliding doors. And I went, whoa, and this vision of loveliness. Thanks a lot for picking her up. And I'm sorry I have to hustle you out of here. We have an awful lot to catch up on. Oh, that's some champagne. Thanks. 
Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you. Oh, we sort of got a rush. Why? Where are we going? We're going to Verdoux's, the center table at 8 o'clock. Oh, you remembered that. How sweet. Yeah, I made reservations at the airport. How does you, me, and Aunt Maureen sound? Uh... Honey, I don't know if your dad ever told you, but Aunt Maureen and I are no longer married. I know, and I think that it's about time that you dealt with it. I am dealing with it. She's not here. Ike, come on. What about Uncle Ike? What happened to Uncle Ike? Does my calling you Ike threaten you? Well, that's it for me. Thanks for the champagne. Have another one. This Listen. whole thing upsets you, doesn't it? I just don't have an overwhelming desire to sit down and have dinner with Aunt Maureen. She thinks it's a very good idea. She's got a lot of repressed feelings that she wants to get out. All right, I'm going to go take a shower. You should wear a blue suit. Psychologically, it's a more honest color. Uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet yeah, you, too. Bye-bye. <laughs> What happened to her? Come a long way from the Mesozoic era, huh? I cannot have dinner with Werner Earhart and Attila the Hunt. The puppets are waiting. You're going to have to be with me tomorrow. You better help me through tonight. Hey, come on, partner. How bad can a simple dinner with your ex be? <laughs> it's nice seeing Maureen again. Would you like some more wine? Uh, Ike. Uh, right lapel. Left uh, collar. You know, I think I've got a good idea. Would you and Maureen ever consider sensory deprivation tanks? Waiter, check, please. Why don't you two go ahead? I'll be with you in a minute, all right? Andre, would you do me a favor? You know the card I gave you before. I would like to pay in cash. Certainly, Mr. Porter. Was everything all right? The lady, she left in such a... a Huff. Exactly. You don't remember the ex-Mrs. Porter? Oh, how foolish of me. Divorce, new job, moving to a new house. I think that Ike is afraid of success. I think psychologically that he's running away. I work with the guy. Trust me, he's fine. That's outwardly, but inside, he doesn't know who he is anymore. I mean, think about it. Three months ago, he was a well-respected deputy chief of police, right? Now, think about it, he's, he's living out some fantasy. What is he doing? I mean, he's running around the street with a young guy and guns. Are you going to play doctor the whole time you're out here? Okay, it doesn't take Joyce Brothers to know that my uncle was not cut out to bust hookers and junkies. He's great with hookers and junkies. Okay, listen, that's for guys like you. Anybody can look at you and see the difference. You're in touch with yourself. I'm in touch with myself? Yeah, I mean, you're tough, you're aggressive, you're street smart, all of those things. Yeah, all those things. <laughs> Sandy, I like that you think, you know, but you just got to remember where you are. All right, where am I? California, where the beach meets the quiche. <laughs> Roll down the window, let in some air. Lighten up, loosen up, yeah. Have some fun, you know, let just let things happen. Are you hitting on me? No, no. Well, think about it.
copies you're making? A hundred. A hundred? Yeah, it's a great article. I want to send it to some people back at school. Let's continue to act like you know what you're doing. I'll be at my desk. Ah, pardon me. When did you get in? Oh, hi, a couple of minutes ago. I guess I missed the live entertainment after dinner, huh? Is that the patrol report? Yeah. So I guess between your ex and that guy trying to run you down, you had a heck of an evening out? How's Sandy? Oh, she's fine. She was down here bright and early, looking at the mug book for suspects. What is she doing at the copying machine? Between mug shots, she found a commissioner's report on handling psychotics in swimming pools, and she's making copies for everybody in the state of Iowa. Porter, do you just happen to know that lady at the copying machine? Yes, she's my niece, Lane. Any reason why she should be using department equipment during department hours? Sandy, the commissioner's going to be very happy that you've done this work for him. Detective Lane, this is my niece, Sandy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Mike, could I use the space, please? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Thanks. Yeah. Porter, Jonas. What have you got on this robbery last night? Uh, patrol took a preliminary report, Ike. You got it. A uh, woman's name is Vanessa Murdoch. She gave a list of the stolen items and a pretty good description of the guy. A purse, a cheap watch. Is that it? The bracelet. What bracelet? It was huge. It's not on the report. Oh, well, then do it over. I saw the guy rip it off her arm. Who is this guy? <laughs> this is my boss, Lieutenant Zaga. Uh, this is my niece, Sandy Porter. You're the one who was tying up the copying machine. About that bracelet, everything. There's nothing on the report about a stolen bracelet. I told the police guy all about it. Sandy, that's the witness's statement. She didn't report a stolen bracelet. Well, why not? Watches and bracelets look a lot alike. Maybe you were mistaken. Were you an only child? I beg your pardon? It's just interesting, because a Harvard report shows that only children have a tendency to reject statements by people younger than they are. <laughs> I think that the lieutenant was just trying to see whether you were sure about what you saw. I have three sisters. All right, look. There was a bracelet. It was very big, and there were lots of diamonds, and I saw them. You remember what Aunt Maureen always said, a porter never forgets a diamond? That's what she always said. Okay, fine. Check it out. See if Aunt Maureen is right. Well, I guess we got a case. I guess we do. Three sisters is just like being an only child. Shop said Tiffany lives in a place like this. Just because it doesn't have curb appeal doesn't mean it's not charming inside. I want to do everything I can to help you. But I already gave the officer a very detailed description of the robber. We understand, ma'am. We just need a value on the stolen items. I don't know, 15, 20 bucks in my wallet? The watch is the kind you chuck when the battery dies. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say $50. Okay. All right, now what about jewelry? Brooches, a ring, a bracelet? Look, guys, I'm not into glitz, and if I were, do you really think I could afford the real thing? We do have an eyewitness who saw the mugger take a bracelet. You mean the girl who called for help? Yes, she's very sure that she saw an expensive-looking bracelet that night. I don't know what to say. I mean, it was dark out. I have no idea why she'd lie to the police. Maybe she saw a glint off my watch. Well, she probably made a mistake. These things happen. Look. If anything else occurs to you, could you please give us a call at that number? I sure will. Great. Yeah. Let's roll down a block and see what she does. Why? Because Sandy's telling the truth and Vanessa's not. Did you give her a polygraph when I wasn't looking? 25 years in the people business, Tony. You learned to read them. Eye movement, body language. Believe me. Vanessa was wearing a bracelet that night. Girls are great till they're 12. Yeah, then about 18, they get great again. <laughs> Sandy used to love the Bobsy Twins books. That's a series, you know. I used to take her down to the swap meet in Pasadena whenever she came to visit. All I had to do was buy her a dozen Bobsy Twins books, and she'd be happy the whole time of the visit. This is really fascinating, Ike. Did you bargain, or did you pay full price? Now I have gone from her favorite uncle to a lump of plasticine to be molded into the image of Dr. Gunter Lanzmann. She hasn't seen you in a long time. Maybe what she's seeing now is an unhappy guy. She's 19 years old. What does she know about my life, or her life, for that matter? She loves you. 
She's known you for a very long time. Maybe you should just try to listen to her with an open mind. I can't even do that. I was going to take her to Venice for dinner on the beach. Now she tells me she's going out. Looks like your people reading might be paying off. Yeah. Let the games begin. She's a restaurant critic. Or well, maybe she's meeting Mr. Wright. What do you think she's doing tonight? Well, if she follows pattern, she'll go home, sit tight, and button up until the next meal is offered. Oh, no, I'm talking about Sandy. You think she's met somebody yet? Um, well, you know, it's a big world out there, right? You know, a lot of somebody. There are a lot of slime balls out there. I don't have to tell you that. No, you don't, no. Hey, watch it. Check it out. What have we got here? These people definitely know each other. I think we found Mr. Wright, Tony. Well, that's how he can afford for dues. He never washes his truck. Big and beautiful and right in front of us. One PEA. Seven two five. How do you see that far? Call it in the DMV. Henry 21, go. Vehicle is registered to a Gus Weedner 14862 Apache Place, NCIC shows. That's Vanessa's Weedner address. Has one prior, served 14 months of county time on a 1 to 5 for receiving stolen property. Released eight months ago, still on parole. Copy control. A carpet installer with a history of dealing in stolen property. Maybe he was fencing a hot bracelet. And lovely Vanessa needed something to make up for all the lousy wontons he made her eat. Yeah. Didn't you tell me just the other day that you wanted to look into some carpeting for your living room? Oh, yes. Mm hmm. 175,000 square feet. Now, I beg your pardon? That's right. Perhaps you've heard of us with the Rancho Amigo Motor Hotel. 344 units. We are at where I-95 meets 101 and then just goes by the 205. 344 units. We've got cable television. We've got movies for adults and children and the world's largest salad bar. Sir, sure, I've seen your ads. You have? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk sad. Well, well, why don't we? Uh, why don't we start with our Double Twill Valencia line? Double Twill Valencia. Fine sheen, great durability, and... Excuse me. Uh, 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 sir, uh, I'll be right with you. Taiwanese craftsmanship is superb. And so, the, price, the price is, well, let's just say, you can't do better anywhere else. I'm not talking some small job here. I've got a whole rec room, you know, 14 by 16. Can't you see I'm with someone, sir? Fine. Isn't there someone else in this big store? No. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do? Browse. Some people have a lot of nerve, don't you think? <laughs> Look at here. I want to talk to you about that big roll up there. You see it?
That's a mighty fine looking piece of carpet. I'm going to get back to you on this right away. All righty, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You take care of your own stuff, will you? All right. See you again soon. Weedner may not be a world-class felon, but he sure can lay carpet. He's done 75 jobs since he was paroled. Well, we're going to have to run down each and every one of them. Just stop. <laughs> you know, what we should do, really, is look into each and every client of his and find out if any of them has had his bracelet stolen. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, partner. <laughs> This is my partner, Detective Jonas. You're going to have to deal with my husband. He handles the police. Please, detectives, about the murder. So you bought the house from the dead woman's estate? Uh, the carpet. Watch the carpet. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Yeah, they, uh, they found the body right over here by the four level. The four level? Pete's in traffic. He built highways. Right after we had the bloodstained sections recarpeted, Pete started putting down these runners. Yeah, it took me two weeks before I figured it out. The, the 101, the harbor, the Golden State. I'm kind of proud of it. Ingenious. So the realtor actually told you that the woman was murdered right here in this room? During a robbery, right. You know, you guys would know all this stuff if you bothered to read each other's reports. Other detectives have gone over this with you? Why do you think we need the carpet runners? I'm sorry we've taken up your time. You've been very kind. Thank you. Uh, I'll take the harbor, is it? Mm. Uh, all right. All right, we'll pull the files on the original robbery and see what was taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, uh, whoa, whoa, what time does Central Records close? Whoa, big guy, no way. I'm out of here at 1,700 hours. Come on, we'll do it on our own time. Don't you see it tracks? Weedner installs carpet. There just happens to be a robbery, and we are ready to close the circle on Vanessa Murdoch. Well, what can I say? I got a date. Oh. Who was it this time? Barbara the student, Trudy the dancer, Nora the nurse, Sandy the niece. All right, list all known relatives with known personality disorders. And Clara, an unnatural fear of spotted fruit. Now, that's a quirk. Uncle Ralph and the Wigs, that's a disorder. Oh, please. Gotta be quiet. Ike is probably asleep. He needs his rest. Uh, don't worry about him. He sleeps like a rock. No, old guys are like that. Night's a very slow time for them. <laughs> don't mind me. Just got in from the senior center myself. Thought I'd get a little warm milk before I shuffled off to bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ike, he's the funniest partner I ever had. Well, we had a great time tonight. Uh, found this old bookstore by the university, big psych section. Is that a fact? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ike, you seem on edge. Me? No. Something wrong? You couldn't find the files or something? Oh, no, we found them all. No. The, the neighbors remembered the carpet truck. Uh, the homicide talked to Wadner. You're kidding, so? He has an alibi. Don't tell me, Vanessa Murdoch. Mm hmm The murderer got away with $50,000 in jewelry. Jewelry included two Orfevre necklaces, two diamond rings, four carat and two carat, three cameo brooches, one emerald pin, one ruby pin, and one diamond bracelet. Wait, but if the old lady was murdered, could they get a description of the bracelet? Better than that. They have the insurance photo. This is it. This is the bracelet that I saw. Whoa. 
Hey, buddy, nice work. You saved us a lot of time tonight. I'm gonna save you some more, because it's real late now, and we all have a big day tomorrow. Right, a uh, big day. Okay, um... Hey, listen, I had a really... Excuse me. Um... I just wanted to say I had a great time tonight. Thanks, Tony. Me too. Yeah, uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about this case, if you don't mind. Yeah. Excuse me. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I don't either. What the hell's wrong with you? I've worked with you long enough to know how you operate. I'm shutting you down right now before you make a big mistake. Oh, that's great. That's just great. I show your niece a nice time on the town, and you turn into this one-man lynch mob. Hey, nothing happened, okay? Except maybe something in your mind. I've heard enough about what's going on in my mind. Thanks. Ike, you want to talk about this? Not to you. That was the rudest thing I've ever seen. I don't want to discuss with you what is rude and what is not. No, well, you just humiliated me. You took away my right to make a decision. Now, I'm an adult now, and you're treating me like a child. And you're treating me like a laboratory experiment animal. Not all of us are rats. We don't want to jump for the pellet. Some of us want to jump out of the cage. That's what I've done, and it works for me. I didn't... I didn't mean to talk to you that way. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry, too. I just thought that you were unhappy. I just wanted to help you. It's not that I'm unhappy. I spent 20 years with your Aunt Maureen. And I'm unhappy that that didn't work out. But I'm happy that we did something about it. And I... You're right, I've got a lot of things to work out. <laughs> Let's eat something. Let's eat everything in the house. <laughs> Listen, about last night, I just got it. It's Douglas. Fine. Okay. Let's take that picture of the bracelet over to Zaga to prove that Sandy is telling the truth. It's not going to prove anything. It's a different case, Ike. A different old case. Zaga's not going to make any connection. We've got to try, don't we? Yeah, fine. Let's try. Great. Wait a minute. About last night, this is my problem, not yours. You and Sandy are both adults, and I, unfortunately, was not behaving like one. Accepted. Believe me, though, you are not the first father to throw me off a front porch. <laughs> you may be the first uncle. Sandy told me nothing happened anyway. She also said if it did happen, it was none of my business. But since nothing happened anyway, it really doesn't matter, does it? I guess not. You sure nothing happened? No. I knew that. <laughs> I just have to get used to the idea that Sandy's a big girl now, and her decisions are her decisions. And if she wants to study some psychological mumbo-jumbo, I just have to learn to accept it. So she told you about that weekend at the ashram? What's that? Touch therapy. What? what? Primal stuff. Everyone gets naked in a hot tub and shares their feelings. It's all very natural, she said. Look familiar? That's the bracelet in the insurance photos. Where'd you get it? Pawn shop undercover. This metal defective was trying to hock it. Have the murder file sent down to me in booking. Murder? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you crazy, man? I took a bracelet, but I didn't kill nobody. Move, slug. You stole that bracelet outside of Verdue's restaurant that night, didn't you? Yeah. You were the cop who chased me. This guy saw the whole thing. He can tell you I didn't kill nobody. Sure, tell it to Chucky Mance. He's telling the truth. The Murdoch woman can ID him. Well, then get her down here, Porter. You may not believe this, but I got cases of my own. Let's get out of here. Him? No way. The guy who took my watch was very tall, and I was as close to him as I am to you. It was very dark in front of that restaurant, Miss Murdoch. Look, I know what I saw, okay? So you're sure? Yeah, I'm sure. All right, will you come with us for a minute? I don't believe what you're putting me through. I mean, we're talking about a couple of bucks and a cheap watch. Like I'd just soon drop the whole thing. We appreciate your cooperation. Just please make yourself comfortable. Sit down here. It won't take much more time. I... 
We can't hold him much longer without booking her. We gotta talk to Zaga right now. Never mind Zaga, the lieutenant's upstairs at a brief. I still need that file, Porter. I'm writing up for booking approval. I need a shot of that brace. Listen, we are about to crack this thing wide open. Hold off until we can interrogate the man. No, 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 no. My paperwork's not gonna be late because he used it for next. Say I was the murderer! Why would I wait six months to hock the bracelet? Yeah. It doesn't make sense! But you did try to hock the bracelet. A day later! You guys know how long it usually takes you to get a hot sheet. Look at me! Excuse me, Detective. I'm Vanessa Murdoch, and uh, Detective Porter and Jonas are handling my case. Oh, I'm sorry. See, we've been pretty short-handed around here lately. Well, the thing of it is, they won't tell me anything that's going on. And I'm the victim. Don't I have any rights around here? Well, yes, ma'am, you sure do. See, Porter and Jonas are still green on the Bureau. If I were you, I'd file a complaint on them. Let me see if I can find the appropriate form. Look, we can do this later. The thing is, I just want to know what the hell is going on. I mean, you look like you know what's going on. Maybe you could help me. Well, you have to understand I'm not the detective of record, so what I tell you will have to be kept strictly off the record. But here's the deal as I see it. Let's say the murderer kept the bracelet. And gave it to his girlfriend. Okay. We're gonna try something for you. Outside, in the squad room, there's a lady you say you stole the bracelet from. Manny, all you gotta do is point her out. You mean never prove I didn't kill nobody? What it will do is it will give us two witnesses who put Vanessa Murdoch in front of the restaurant that night with the bracelet. Right. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, we got it. This way we corroborate Sandy's Sandy's story. Yeah, let's go, Manny. Come on. Where's Vanessa? I don't know. I'll check the hall. Lane. You know that woman we were talking to? Vanessa Murdoch? Yes, where is she? How do I know? Maybe she had to get her hair done. You know, Porter, you gotta quit jacking these victims around. When did she leave? Right after I finished talking to her, just before you came out. You talked to her? What'd you talk to her about? Well, I filled her in on the things she needed to know, like the bracelet, your niece being the only witness. You told her about Sandy? I, I'm telling you, I leave the phone the book all the time. It could be nothing. Sure, yeah, just stop this thing. <laughs> Twenty-one to control. Did our APB go out? Affirmative, one hundred twenty-one. Additional on that suspect now has a hostage. An officer's niece. That's a copy. Do you have a vehicle description? No, we're working on it. Ike, right, look, we're going to find Sandy. If they have touched her, they haven't had time to touch her. We shouldn't go to that carpet store. Weedner and Vanessa wouldn't go there. It's our only shot. It's the only way we can find out what they're driving. Both their cars. You gotta be in Weedner's van. Gus Weedner, did he show up for work this morning? Mr. Porter, I know we didn't talk padding. Did We're we? cops. Did he show up for work this morning? Uh, uh sure, 8 a.m. What's going on? We gotta find his van. When did he take off? I don't know. Maybe 15 minutes ago. Does he have a radio in the van? No. Well, hey, listen, what's going on? What is the number on top of Weedner's van? 14. But you have to tell me. I think it could be any place. We we need a chopper. That's a great idea. Do you know what it would take for an ordinary detective to get a chopper? Barry, it's Ike. Listen, I need a favor. I need a helicopter. It's an emergency. Fuel requisitions. I have to find a carpet truck. Eight captains initialing forms. It's a carpet... Carpet world truck. It's got a 14. A 14 written on the top. Approvals from the deputy chief. Yeah, and listen, while we're at it, can you broadcast the description over the air? Flight plans filed with the FAA. Thanks a million. I owe you one. Ten minutes. We've got to go now. Like I said, no problem. Tony would do the traffic updates. Take the door still open. 
seatbelt on here. This thing doesn't have a door. That's why they have seatbelts. But I like doors, Ike. Hey, I need doors. When you go up in the air, doors are real nice to have. This is not going to be like one of your ordinary traffic runs. Listen, can you broadcast live from up here? Sure. 50,000 watts worth. Okay, here's what I want you to say. looking for a tan carpet world van number 14. Hey, number 14. If you spot it, give us a call at All Hits Radio, 555-4111, and win two tickets to see Barry Manilow live in concert. Great. Is getting any calls? There's 16 so far. What do you want to do, take the ninth caller? One of them might not be a crank. Nah, the DJ checked for pranks. Only three of the callers knew the carpet truck was a small van. Where'd those three come from? Irvine, Pomona, someplace in the valley. They only left 20 minutes ago. There's no way that they could be in Irvine and Pomona by now. Sepulveda. The third call was Sepulveda. That sounds about right. Let's go. You heard him. Come on, let's go. Hang on. I'll try and get the caller on the landline. That's good. All the information we can get will help. Okay, that's where they were sighted, Route 51. Well, can't you get any lower? Hang on. If we get any lower, we can start checking for Dutch Elm disease. What's that down there? There they are. What's that? It's right on top of us. No sweat. It's just a traffic helicopter. Gus, do you see any traffic? Damn. This guy's crazy. He's gonna land right on top of us.
get you some magazines. Oh, I've got a bag full of college catalogs for the plane. Besides, you've got an arraignment this afternoon. Yeah, well, we never did get to go roller skating at Venice Beach, and you didn't get to explore any new malls, and I guess the mesquite mahi-mahi is gonna have to wait till your next trip. And we didn't get to show you the error of your ways. You gotta know that I'm a much happier person now that I'm not a deputy chief. I know. And I found out why. Goodbye, Uncle Ike. It's the final call. Hey. Hey. Well, <laughs> you're gonna take care of him, okay? Okay. You know, uh, touch therapy. We want to start working on your sense of self-worth, Ike. In the car. <laughs> believe that, fundamentally, this case is about carpeting, bracelets, or even murder. Perpetrator is a classic example of Dr. Gunter Lanzmann's theory of fixated criminal recidivism. <laughs> Zog is going to need a shovel to get through reports on this one. Look at him grinning. He's thinking about Trudy and her aerobic hand puppets. I mean, handing out cards. Come on. It's a good thing Sandy diagnosed the insecurity he's hiding under all that confidence. Are we eating or what? It is the end of the month, so I figured I would defrost a pizza. Pizza? Graziella's on me. Graziella's is in Zuki Zuki. Yeah, well, she's game. I just can't shake her for answers. Good night, Eddie. Good night, Eddie. Good night, Heartbreaker. Next, on The Oldest Rookie. But you guys have nicknamed the suspect a serial killer with a C. Honey, we don't nickname killers. We just catch. How many men will be in our unit, sir? Including you? Um, two. Well, actually, three, once you found the psychic. What are you doing? What are you doing? What the hell is she doing? There's a good reason that we did that, sir. Yes. You're idiots. She is the only person who has seen the killer and is around to tell us about it. Take a hike! I saw that beast. He looked just like you. Later, the Equalizer helps an innocent man accused of murder. But first, life and death hold the key for the upcoming season of Magnum P.I. Next.